I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what the, um, you know, where, when that determination was made or who made it, I, I'm not clear on how all that whole process works. So, yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah. George, how are you doing? Fabulously. Good, you guys? good, I'm doing all right. Mr. Bob, get your ears loaded. Yeah. <laughs> and Hi. we actually have four people, so okay. I, can I take a... One of those, sure, two, or actually, they can sit over there. Sure, that'd yeah. be fine too. Thank you. Um, this is Leslie Hathaway, she's here for the uh, Methodist Church that's oh, requesting yeah, the CPA funds for the um, and was looking for the endorsement of the committee. So, um, there she's bringing a, a group with her. So, yes, please. Oh, sure. perfect. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> that foyer is looking pretty good. It looks Hey, this is for us here. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you? It's good to see you. Yeah. You know, I have some. Oh, George Slama. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, Hi, Leslie Hathaway. I talked to you at the Liberty Party. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, there you go. George Slama. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Too. I was <laughs> laying the ground. That's correct. <laughs> Got a few books that were from my uh, great great grandfather, who was a baker. Really? They're Methodist books. Wow. So the first meeting were at this house. Uh, Orlando? Yeah. Yes. The first the, the meeting of the trustees to make right. a decision. At yeah, 57 uh, Pleasant Street. Yes. yes. So I've got I've got two or three books of his. I oh, would love people. to see them. Uh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, because the house is still there, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a nice shape. Hello. Seventeen the earliest house. <laughs> Uh, Lisa Sherman. Yes. 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 Hi. John Miller. Hi, John. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Glass. Okay, great. One of the earliest houses built on Is that your house? No, uh, oh. two doors down. Oh, who lives there? Uh, the Lindquist. It's called the Lindquist. Oh, yes. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah, so that house, uh, it's an old house. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Benoni Baker for uh, Obed Baker and I forget who now, but he was the head of that uh, president. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think if I have the history right, I mean, so these folks are members of the board of trustees now, right? But they had a board of trustees meeting. Well, then Bob's telling us about this home where the board of trustees met, the like decision to build yes. the church building. Oh, right. yeah. uh, it's and, pretty well. And the home is so beautiful. It they is. always have lovely flowers. They're lovely people. Okay. So, so he married. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I think we're going to have one more, um, at least one uh, more person come. Okay. Okay. She, she should be here. And, okay. Uh, and where would you, she usually she started. usually sits over here, so maybe and put that in front of. I can't get the camera right to work now. right, so I have to flip the computer okay. around okay. instead. But uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Elijah Taylor, this guy, and then the house I live in. Small half cave, uh, it's built in the big time by the city of Mr. Kelly and uh, for uh, Elijah Jenkins, his wife, uh, his sister. Yeah, <clears throat> interesting. Now, Elijah Taylor, himself? yeah, that was what was he connected to the church as well? Because I think he built our first. Parish hall, yeah, because it was called Taylor Chapel. So, like where our parish hall is now, that was built in the fifties. But I think the original one on the back of the sanctuary mm -hmm. film, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I just is, forget the name of the woman that's been in history. Of the, of the 
Fisherman's House. And was that Penny Bach? Yeah, I think so. And uh, I gave her information on the beginnings of the deeds from the Eden House around the buildings. The old schoolhouse, which is now at the Wager Meeting House, was one of the apartments there was in the school on the side. Really? And across the street was the Franklin Meeting. Right, the Barnes Midfield. Yeah, yeah. So I have the deed, I gave you the deeds for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I knew that Penny was doing that research. Well, she should be able to put a pretty yeah. good uh, history together for that. That's great. Thank you. Um, that's just so rich. And she was all excited. She came in the office one day to tell us about some folks that have run a restaurant there. Yeah. A captain, <laughs> something. Yeah. Um, yeah I stopped in at the fisherman's house. I you know, went talking to her about it. Yeah. Oh. Amazing. You said the home that you're in now was built in 1839. And had that stayed in the family? Um, why should why should James oldest daughter marry one great great grandmother's brother? <laughs> Dudley family until 19. Okay. When it got sold out, and then we bought it from this. Mm -hmm. Almost every family in Brent Village is related to my family to some way. Kelly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you related to Martha Gilmore? I am. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my great 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 grandfather gave the property of the Quaker meeting house in 1808 and his son my great 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 grandfather built the house we're, we're having that restored to CPA funds and should it's relatively untouched it's still in use too right Quaker. we hear the the loud noises no no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, is, it is a silent meeting. Yeah. <laughs> like the Methodists with the windows open. All the noise we're making. That might have been a controversy. Yeah, there was a great uh, Methodist congregation in Pasadena mm -hmm. prior to all of this, off Willow Street. And uh, there's an old cemetery there. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right at the top of Runfun Road, right? Well, that's where they met. Okay. Know? And uh, the Methodists were considered the saviors of the town because the Quakers were just too stiff. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, 1824, when they built the Baptist church, that was the only alternative. A lot of people went over there, but when the Methodists came in, <laughs> everybody went there. So uh, probably the music, the hymns are there. Yeah. They're they're always they're kind of it's, you have a history of all the ministers of preach there. No. Yes, yeah, so that's how are, you does, how are you doing? Does a, has a lot of that. Uh, Can't get the camera to work yeah, again, so we're okay, doing the piecemeal like thing. Yeah. yeah. There is one other. Um, I'll just give you the pieces here. George had sent these yesterday, so that yeah. was a little bit of an addition to what they got for you to take a look at. And um, these um, folks behind us are from the Methodist Church to talk about the CPA. Oh. This is Julie Maccabee. She's the chair of our. Um, <laughs> Committee. Let's and we'll Let's introduce ourselves. Okay. Are, is there another person? Well, there, there someone was supposed to be. Um, Meg, um, I never never hear, heard from her one way or the other, so I don't know. Um, Sam can't come. He was having to. Um, he was planning to be here, but he had to secure his boats with the oh, oncoming oh, storm, so that took yeah. priority. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he didn't want to lose his boat. So uh, he sent me a note last night and said he wouldn't be able to be here. So. Um, but so I'm not sure about Megan ever did hear from her. So um, 
I guess we should probably expect her maybe not to be here, but. Um... Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I have gotten my hand that I know is in here. <laughs> I'll go ahead and close the door. Okay. Oh, here she comes. Yeah, oh, there she is. Get ready to get ready. Thanks for all your help. Morning, man. Thanks for all your help. That's just a little bit. Uh, no, we can never, we can never answer. Howard. <laughs> 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 yeah. so Thank you. Okay, so we'll call our meeting to order at 10. And why don't we start with uh, Methodist Rick since our okay, thank you. Uh, demolition sure. here, right? No, no, I don't. Yeah. It's brief, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Leslie Hathaway, and I'm one of six trustees for the South Lambertland Methodist Church. I'm here with Bill Glass. He and I, also a trustee, he and I are the two-person ad hoc committee, and we're preparing a request to the CPA for funding. Also with us is our pastor, Reverend Don Mueller, and Bill's wife, Susan Glass. So we thought you'd enjoy seeing materials. This is part of what we're going to submit for the application of okay. everything. And it shows that our goal is to restore and preserve our 172-year-old building, which is architecturally beautiful. It's also the first large structure you see when you leave 28 and head on Old Main Street in the East of the historic district. So it's very prominent in terms of its position in our neighborhood. Hello. Hi. 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 You guys want to sit back here? Yeah. We, uh, since you guys weren't here yet, we, we jumped to the next item, but we'll get back to you guys in uh, just a few minutes. Hi. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm we're from the United Methodist Church, and we're um, we're going to be applying for CPA funding to restore our church building at 318 Old Main Street. So if you drive by the church now quickly, you'll see beautiful gardens at the church office, and the church itself looks nice. But if you walk up to it, uh, you'll see some examples of where the vinyl siding is all cracked and the gorgeous windows are in very bad repair. We took some photos this week, and if you flip through, you'll see some photos of the how the side was cracked. And, um, at, at the time, I think this was probably considered a good idea, but it's certainly not historically correct. And we'd like to return that to its clabbered and design and repair the windows, which they don't work. Yeah, we can't all work. Anyway, uh, so our goal is to learn from you in terms of anything we can do to strengthen our application for the CPA funding and to ideally you would support the center. It's it would be a, a major benefit to the neighborhood and it's a lovely building, 172 years old, and we hope you um, are supportive of this. So with that, we'll take questions or any suggestions you might have. You're welcome to keep the, the paperwork here. Okay. I don't think they made final siding anymore. And I was well, my, that was one of my questions. Are you... Re, are you getting rid of the vinyl siding and yes. putting up wood? Yes. Yes, if you, we have the formal bid from to restore the clabbered and yeah. then remove the siding and then if whatever can be saved for the clabbered underneath would be used. For if it's anything like the Quaker house, those clabbers on there are, are original. Mm -hmm. So the, the type of wood that was used at the time was a denser wood. Mm -hmm. 
he hit that one today. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of that would be the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's certainly the goal. And we have a, the detailed proposal with the pricing from uh, David Dobell, the bill contract. And he's a member of the church, but he's also supervised all the work done for the steeple. So he knows the building better than any person on earth. Oh, you know David. <laughs> so um, he's given us a bid with details about how the attempt is to save what can be saved, obviously, and only replace what needed. Yeah, that was good. Um, a couple of questions. Uh, I am the um, representative to the CPC for the Historical Commission. Oh. So um, applications are due this week, I think you know, right? It's noon on the 20th. Yes. yes. Um, okay. And um, one of the things that um, we look for are, you know, funding, other funding sources. Um, that you're bringing to the table. So that's really important um, that you have looked at that, looked at what your opportunities are. Um, and um, with the city application, it's um, really indicated that it's required that you indicate how much you're bringing to the, you know, to the project and how much CPA funding you're asking for. Um, so I see here the SM is 425. Um, so the CPC would not entertain that full amount. You need to be able to show what um, you can bring you know, to the table. Some on this part, yeah, under project justification, second paragraph. Okay. That's just saying what they've that's had. That's what they've like, raised that's and used right. already, right? right? No, for previous things. Right. I don't see anything in here. So, um, any questions relative to that? Is you know, yeah, Mike. Already skin in the game. Yeah. My question was: um, Do you have a a uh, separate fund that you've established where church members have contributed to a fund solely for this project, as opposed to? Other types of projects going on in the church. How much have the membership raised mm -hmm. at this point in time? I don't know. Anybody want to so, speak up? Yeah, we, um, we've been <laughs> spending like crazy, so I would say if you go past the building, <clears throat> we, uh, in terms of actual campaign funding, mm -hmm. we raised 125000 to install an elevator and handicapped bathroom in the church. It's not the historic part, it's the right. parish hall out back. Mm -hmm. And that was successfully completed and we raised the money. Okay. Uh, but my so, question is, have you raised money specifically for these types of um, renovations that you're going to do that are part of the 425,000? We have not. We recently in the last year and a half spent $150,000 to put new roofs on the fisherman's house, reshingle the entire fisherman's house, put 19 new windows in the fisherman's house, insulate and do lighting, although the lighting is through mass savings. So, but, so and yes, um, we just spent 81,000 on the new HVA heat pump systems for the for the fisherman's house, although we will be getting about half of that back in rebates because we're using heat pumps. So we have spent, I would say, more money in the last two years than this church has spent uh, in recent history trying to do what we would consider energy improvements and maintenance deferred for the last 40 years. I think also the if I'm not mistaken, the front section of the fisherman's house is a pretty historical piece of structure as well. Yes. That, I think, actually even marks the very beginning of the historic district. I think there used to be a sign there. It actually fell down and 
we've been in touch with folks about getting it back up again, right? With the, um, so you were trying to look at the, the whole campus, if you will. Um, and so short answer is no, we haven't from asked the congregation for a specific, you know, campaign for the mm -hmm. um, sanctuary siding. Uh, the hope was to get some help from the town with that, but um, the congregation has been putting money in, you know, for the that building and the building next door, which is all part of the mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. house. Yeah. Well, the, other, the other thing is um, the way the CP uh, funds work, you, you have to Pay the contractor yes. and then ask for the reimbursement. So you have to show that you have the money to right. escrow somewhere or in the savings for somewhere. We, I mean, the trustees have. We have that. Funds. And actually, it's included in the funding paradigm. Right. The reality mm -hmm. is, if we, if we <laughs> pay for this ourselves, we'd have no reserve fund. And, and, the trustees could never make that decision because over the last even 10 years, we've often used reserve funds. So we cannot deplete that. And we would not undertake a project where we depleted our reserve. So um, once again, the application does not require that you have firm commitments when you submit, but that you indicate certain areas or certain funding resources that you are going to reach out to and you would show when the period is open to receive your application and when they would be anticipated. So once again, this funding cycle will approve CPA grant starting July 1st. So, um, so important for you to really look and and again, if you run out of time, then you know clearly open for the next cycle. To it. So, um, can you recommend any organizations that need to apply to for this kind of um, Not, you know, we don't do that. Um, I mean, if you, um, you know, go on to different funding sources, um, you know, foundations. Uh, check with other Methodist churches that may have secured funding. Did you, did um, you have good grant writers? We, did, we do not. Well, yeah, in <laughs> congregation, so uh, uh, be surprised what you've got in there. Uh, you could apply to the state for all kinds of things. Well, we're not really a big congregation. It was, and it's all relative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He comes from a previous church in the in, um, yeah, but I mean, it's yeah, all like, going. So we have like 20. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. relative to us, you're pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's a good point. I think earlier I saw some documentation was reaching out to the state kind of historic body, state preservation body. Um, it's another level of strictness that if you're not. on how it works. Yeah. yeah. That's why I asked you this. Yeah. We, we do not. Bill and I are doing it because there was no one else and this is all new for us. So I, I hope that's not reflected in what we, we tried to <laughs> try to follow the rules. No, there, but the CPC will probably ask you if you're glad to apply. Right. We could certainly do a campaign. I mean, we when was our elevator canceled? Seven years ago or so. Oh, okay. I think so. so we could, if there was a sense that this was a reality, we could do a campaign. And on one of the things, we've had other bids. One of the bids we got was we have these four magnificent windows in the main building and a person expert in restoring these windows had quoted us 10,000 per window. So, um, you know, maybe we could, I, I actually, before I retired, I did some fundraising, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's hard work. Uh, anyway, it's, if we had a sense that we could get the vast majority of this from CPA, we could raise some. 
but uh, I also have a sense of the financial wherewithal in our church and we could do some things, but not not the majority. And so, it wouldn't be realistic to propose a campaign if you did not have the majority in outside service. So uh, another alternative to consider is you, you have an overall project. Um, you can prioritize parts of it mm -hmm. that are critical. So if it's the windows, then you do that maybe this year or <clears throat> some other component. Um, but so, you know, think about that too. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> it doesn't have to be the full proposal. You would show in your application, this is what the full project is, but what we're doing is where it's mm -hmm. so yeah. we're looking at a piece and here it is, and then it's maybe doable. Um, Mm -hmm. So, George, if I'm understanding what you were telling them correctly, would it be something where if they add to the proposal the possibility that they could do a campaign through the church, it wouldn't necessarily need to be that you already started and do it before the application is submitted. It would be in there as, okay, here are the funds we're looking for, and we expect to ask the congregation and set up this campaign if we are awarded this, and this is the amount we're hoping to get from that. So it's not something you have to then propose to the congregation prior to it being submitted. Is that kind of so? Is that right? <laughs> the, so yes. Yeah. So what? Okay. Um, what the CPC does is it looks at your proposed cost. It looks at what you're bringing to the table, reduces that from your cost, and then. You know, it's up to you to have the funding to cover that gap. Right. Um, and so again, the CPC from a taxpayer standpoint needs to have a high degree of confidence that you're going to be able to do that. And so that's up to you to present. And um, because without the funds to complete it, then the CPC. Um, again, has a fiduciary responsibility to the residents to make sure that that money is going to be allocated. And if it's not going to be spent down, because you have two years once the grant is you know, approved to complete the project. So those are the considerations. And showing that you have raised significant funds in the past does show that you're you have the ability to do so. So I feel like that would be important to make sure that's included. Mm -hmm. But you know, again, we would be looking at, have you received pledges? Have you received commitments? Not just, this is what we'll try to raise. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, you need to prove to the CPC and the town that this is going to happen on both sides. Mm -hmm. Right. George, let me see if I understand, because I'm looking at, at here where you put estimated cost and funding plan. Uh, the church is able to provide the upfront needed from the reserve. However, I believe your intent is once you receive the funds, you're going to replenish the trustee fund, which you can't do with the CPC. Yeah. Okay. But, but the funds that they would receive would be what they're going to put up less the amount. Well, they'll have already paid the contractor for the work done. Right. And so all they're doing is getting the first for what they need to allocate the contract. But they are not going to get the full 425. Is that correct, George? It's it's on a reimbursement basis. So what this says is that the Methodist Church has to have sufficient funds to bank the up on outflows to the contracts. Right. So um, so that is on a reimbursement basis. So, so I'll, yeah. I'll give you an example. The, the Quaker Meeting House, we came in asking for more than what we got, but they asked us to make a dual phase out of it. So uh, the roof but is going to be part of phase two. And so then we have uh, so then the 
composed of everything else in the phase one. And that reduced the overall cost that what we were going to ask for. So Did you submit two applications and you? The first one is without the proof. But when we had all the inspections that I can make, are We have to reapply. So when phase one is done, we'll reapply for, for more funds. Which you may or may not get. Right? Well, it was under their recommendation. So if you go in, <laughs> if you go in at your level and say it's too much money, go back and do this or do that, or maybe break it into a couple of phases, then you have to help them. An important factor is that the CPC only has a certain amount of funds to spread against, you know, across four designated buckets. So, so again, your your application is part of um, a pool, obviously, that we'll get, and um, and it's very rare, um, very rare that applicants get their full ask. It's, it's just not practical. Okay. So I'm hearing what he's talking about, like you said, is to, to break a larger plan up into phases and to do an application of targets, a, a, a phase, a first step, if you would, um, and then speak to that and how much skin the congregation can have in the game and so on, and then uh, do like a step approach and then reapply if that gets approved and we get that worked on then the next step. Right. And, that's what the was done at the Quaker meeting comes yeah. to know. It's helpful. Um, yeah. 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 All right. So do we want to vote I, on like supporting this? Yeah, or? I think the structure is uh, extremely <clears throat> significant in South Yarmouth. Um was the third meeting house built, still standing. And uh um I think it's uh, I think it's worthy of cause. I, I move that we um, uh, write a letter of support uh, for the grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I could support it, but I'd like to, I would like to see how much the congregation is going to put into it, whether it's through pledges or what. I support the renovation of it. Let's put it that way. That's but I would like well, some additional. For, yeah, this is for the letter. This is for. Uh, this is not to say anything other than we think it's. That's a good idea. Oh, I think it's a worthy cause. And the historic right. building and fits well, into the and the CPC yeah. determines the yeah the funding part. So, mm -hmm. so support the yeah, idea. Yeah. So. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> kind of like yeah. Yeah. yeah okay <laughs> all right did i get so but we'll take it <laughs> like a yes thank you very much all right thank so, you so thank you good luck yeah thanks for your time today yeah well thank you i appreciate it see that thank you okay. thank you all right so we have the gentleman here for 176 old me mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 176 the barn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a 76 on here. Yeah, that's the barn. That's the barn. Okay. A separate piece of property. Gotcha. Actually. Yes. Okay. Is this the one we went up? You guys went up to see? Yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah. I couldn't go. Yes. So, I'm going to fill me in here. <laughs> So what were the takeaways from the site visit? Yeah. Well, the takeaway from the site visit was the barn is old. Mm -hmm. And it appears on the 1880 map, okay. the 1910 map. Um, there are no earlier maps other than the 1851 chart which also shows an old building on the property 
um, in that in that location. Uh, the interior of it supports its age, mm -hmm. um, but it has fallen into disrepair. And I think the the request is to have it torn down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that would be the easy thing to do. Um, I just can't get out of my head the fact that mm -hmm. it's on a historic property. Uh, the owners of, it's in the Bass River Historic Zone. So it's not only a historic property, but it's in, it's in the zone. And the owners of these properties have a, a, a obligation to maintain these buildings and not do nothing and let them fall into repair and then say, I want to tear it down. So I'm torn on this. I know you're looking to sell the house. And the towel wants it torn down. And the guy who said it before me, they didn't put tar paper on the roof. That's what caused it to rot the roof off. And also, he just put trim over the rotted beams and stuff inside. So once it started going, within two to two and a half years, it had seen God. I got two carpets here that can tell you that it's going to cost way more to fix it than it's worth. This letter from the town doesn't say they want it torn down. It says they want it to be secured and made safe. Right. Well, let me go see if I can get Tim to come up here from the building department. Well, can I, can I come well the other the other thing is that you know someone who's going to buy a historic home yeah. such as yours may want to restore that barn, and by taking it down, you deprive those people of that opportunity. Well, you know, if the town doesn't want it, I don't really want it. I want to sell my I understand. And that's what it boils down to with me. And I think if you own something, more or less you can do what you want to do. In Worcester, I owned an 1850s building, an 1880s building, and an 1890s building. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not worth throwing good money after as far as I'm concerned. I was a uh, landlord for 40 years and owned three buildings. I was born and raised right next, next door. door. House. Uh, um, I don't know if you remember Dr. House. Any of you guys from the Cape? I am. Yeah, remember Dr. House? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm one of the kids. Okay. And uh, that uh, building was owned by Pauline Hopkins, who was the art teacher over at DY, ran that department. And um, her son, uh, even at, at a young age, patched. And they patched that place. And uh, uh, I, I have a, a real questions about how much of that building is actually the same building that you might want to treasure. It's, uh, it's been uh, patched in, in a most uh, disgraceful manner for Years and years and years. There may have been a, a structure there in 1880, but I don't think you'll find a stick of wood in there that was in that structure. That's not true. Mm -hmm. We inspected the building. Right. The main frame is the main frame of that barn. The barn was added onto in a number of places. Yeah. Out back to the right. Um, and the roof, I think, in the I back think the was raised at right. one point. Totally replaced that one. Okay, but the look from the front, which is the character defining feature of that barn, has been there since before 1850. Well, the, the uh, property was developed in 1837 or something, right? 
Stephen Sears. Yeah, yes. Stephen Sears. Who was the son of the owner of the property, was Barnabas Sears. Barnabas Sears, yeah. So anyway. Which I, is I, 188. Um, I just know an awful lot of that um, building has been ripped down. And well, it's very down. clear that the building is not in good shape and that yeah. the roof is caving in. But understand it's due to neglect and not proper maintenance over many years. Yeah, many years because it was kind of crappy when yeah, they bought it. Well, you know, when Polly had it, and then, uh, you know, I remember when they bought that house. Um, uh, that that uh, garage was uh, already pretty sad. When did you buy the house? Sir? I bought the house in uh, uh, 1999, and about three years ago, the roof started going. The joint people rotted on the floor. Certain places you can't walk up there. Have you ever done uh, renovations or structural things to it no, since 1999? I, I had two. No. What did I do? I had two old cars out there. A 56 Thunderbird and a 66 Mustang convertible. I took them out of there when it started leaking three years ago. You know, I maintained my house and put a roof on it. I've shingled it. The house, yeah. the barn, to me, you guys call it a barn. It's more or less a shed. In Worcester, we have carriage houses and barns that would put that thing to shame. You know? Hey, well, this, we're not in Worcester. No, so. we're in the <laughs> That's where I'm from. And my neighborhood was all old houses. I lived in an okay. old neighborhood. Yeah, my name is Don Savage. I'm a historical renovator. Uh, I've inspected that building. And if you look at the front of it, it looks very ordinary, like anything anybody would build today. I don't think there's any real historic significance to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, just, it just looks like any old building around here. The, the whole left side garage doors are modern. And, you know, the building is broad from about four feet to six feet up all the way around the sill. I mean, I don't think it's even really savable from a structural point of view. It looks very ordinary. There are no footings or anything. No. It's just on a slab. And they just covered up the beam. You're stuff. a preservationist? I'm a carpenter. Okay. I think I know you from Quaker meeting. Okay. Really? Yeah. <laughs> He's a carpenter too. Yeah, so the, I don't see any real, you know, significant historic features in, in the outside look of that building at all. Just looks ordinary. So I don't see that it's on the same par with the church or the, even the house itself. Exactly. To me, the house itself is way more valuable than this barn. I wouldn't even call it a barn. I would call it a garage. I call it a shed. Yeah. So that that's just my input there. Yeah, we weren't allowed to go in there because it was shabby when we were kids. I wouldn't let my kids go in there when I first got them. It would make more sense for a new owner to, to make some kind of duplicate or even, they do. even get something nicer designed to put on that spot. Well, just laugh. What did they do anyway? You're saying that if someone owns a historic home is like this, they so should be like, maintained, right? Yeah. So if, we, like if it was disrepair in 1999, it's done nothing to upkeep it and just let it get because to that's this. A, that's a responsibility. Right? It's, I mean, I don't know what we're supposed thing. to do, but that seems well, like not our my question fault. Is in this letter from the town, the town does not. Yeah, they're not saying repair the it down. They're saying make it they're secure and safe. Make it secure and made safe. Right. My interpretation of that is to renovate. Right. You know, that's thirty down. grand. It ain't worth thirty grand. Not to me, it isn't. That's, but that's not what the town well, has said. But that's kind of short sighted because the new owner might disagree. Yeah, but then how can I sell something if they want it taken down? Okay. Who wants but how do you know who wants it taken down? The top. The they town does not want it taken the town down. Town doesn't want it down. It's not going to maintain. You know, I'm not spending well, then you stuff. could just sell the home as is, oh, and because uh, right, that's, that's fine with me. That's right? fine with me. But they said it was the same, so I figured that they wanted it down within six months. That's why it doesn't say that. 
There's Don't nothing anything. here that says question, to take it down. Yeah, the yeah. question here is do we enact a six month home of the <clears throat> yeah. Ask Sarah for a recommendation. It's in the historic district and it's a complete demolition. Okay. It's a well, it's a I did some research on yeah. that. It's a non-contributing structure. Okay. And so, so no. they won't they won't look at it. There's okay. it's excluded from their review. Gotcha. The house is contributing, the house, okay. but the, but the that is not. That is so not. yeah, I tried right. to check that out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so to summarize, this is a structure that's in the National Historic District. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's built in the mid 1800s, it appears. It has significance as an outbuilding. Um, so, to Bob Kelly's point, we don't know if the buyer of the property would renovate it and rebuild it. Mm -hmm. um, that's an unknown at this stage. Um, and given that the building department has not required it to be torn down, I would propose that we do not approve the demolition. We put a hold on it and have the new owner come back to us at that time. That's my motion. All right, so this will keep the town off of me. That's all I want. I just don't want to town on this town committee too. Mm -hmm. No, this is so a historic. Is, so, is it under the town? Yes. Is this the town? Yes. Yeah. This is our requirement. Uh, it's so, a bylaw. So you're saying so is going to supersede whatever the building department wants. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Is that what we're asking? Doctor? It's is a recommendation. It's a right. Yeah. right. Okay. One, since we're here, let me go get Tim and ask him and bring him up. He's the building guy that came up to inspect. It's not right. No. no. So motion on the table. Okay. I'd I second that motion. the next person is my final side. Approved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. So you'll receive a letter um, from us and the building commissioner. One's building. It's up for sale now, but I think the average person wouldn't want it. So if the new person doesn't want it, they get the rip it down? The average person is not going to buy that house. It's in an historic district. The average There's person. How so much money down here? An average person will not buy that house. Okay. Okay. So I must have been an average person. Times have changed. Again, you know, time to change. You can throw much money around. People buy it with vinyl siding on it and new windows and fix it right up. Only if approved by us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand how if somebody owns something. You guys can tell them what the hell. Is don't buy in a historic district. I'm just asking. So you can do whatever you want to your house. No, I'm just asking in general because I don't build these. I'm just money. saying in the historic district. You, you, there are there are rules, character defining features of the building must be made. Yeah, you don't give out a list saying all the stuff that you have. You know, in the historic district, if you have to do this, you have to do that. That's all I'm saying. Is I saw my building in Worcester, and the guy put all new windows, but he had to make them architecturally correct for 1858, and it cost a zillion dollars. Yep. Yep. That's the requirement. <laughs> That's it. when you own in the start district, sir. So okay. Well, thank hey, you. I learned something now. The next house is going to be vinyl and final and new. Thank, thank, <laughs> thank you, you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank yeah. you for your time. Take care. Yeah. Take care. All right. I think next. he needs to move to Worcester. I think he does. Okay. Next item. <laughs> first time we put on a six month thing. Really? You have done that before? <laughs> I would like to understand more about why the Cape Cod Commission did not feel the most significant. 
Well, at least we did a research. Yeah, we saw yeah. that one, right? Yeah, I don't know why though. Well, yeah, I just they, I, yeah. they have policy. So I mean, yeah, I mean, if it's in the if it's an old structure and it's on the property, is it? I mean, uh, is this is not the reason why they felt that the house was historic, but house not. Is not the outbuilding. Right. The house is considered contributing. Right. This is the description of what a non-contributing st structure means. And that it gives you some sort of a really high level it's about why not. it's, about, you know, why they apply that. But it doesn't say specifically, you know, it's very high. It's level. probably not listed on the records <clears throat> as a building. Because uh, it has not. a the house is. number, right? Correct. So it's whoever did the macros did not. Yeah. Did not and that may be. That and may there be are why. enough of building number of homes in the Bass River Historic District, which is why I was doing the, the packet landing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that the building, like for instance, 15 Pleasant Street, all that's listed there is the house. Okay. okay. There's the first library, which is in the backyard. There's the Quaker Schoolhouse, which became an L on that building. There's a water tower okay. on mm -hmm. that on that property. Okay. The barn is from the timbers of the ancient Barnstable uh, church. Okay. None of that is listed in that. Just, just the house. Just, just the house. Okay. Oh, wow. That's just an example. Okay. Yeah. So this is, sounds like this is kind of the same thing. Yeah. You yeah. know, where yeah. the house got in and, and somehow the barn didn't. Correct. And I'll check with Tim about the, the building commissioner deputy yeah. about what. I'm sure that's where they're going. I'm sure they are too. Well, he came. He came to me earlier. He said, "I need to come to your meeting." He told me he did, and I said, "No, you don't need to come." I said, "We've got your letter, which you know I shared with you guys." Yep. No, um, you, don't you know, want that. and I don't. Back. He's gonna really... no, and he's gonna. They're gonna have to do something to it because the town doesn't think it's safe. I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, yeah. they're you the know. guy won't spend thirty thousand dollars to restore that building. Are you kidding me? No. Nope. And he said he never did anything to it. Yeah. It's a piece like, of junk. You just admitted that you left it there yes. to, to kind of rot. <laughs> Good it's job. Right. Since 1999. 1999. It's like you haven't done anything to it. No, I took my cars out. Let it rot. <laughs> so they wouldn't, it wouldn't fall on them. <laughs> Good thing you had your expensive cars not in there. <laughs> you saw yeah, one of the cars fix the barn. Anyway. Okay. So we have. Another update here on the clock tower antenna thingamajiggy that keeps <laughs> changing what they're trying to do with it. Now it's a clock tower. You're gonna get struck by lightning yeah, and send us back to the future. And we got a Sorry. um yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> um I know that they went be before the ZBA to get permission for their new clock tower proposal, but I'm not sure. I think I have the report on I think it's in my email I'll send it to you guys so that okay. this might be a, a moot point but I know yeah, they had sent that letter to on the Methodist uh, yeah the Catholic the that was supposed to be the big poll so really you know what what does everybody think about this I you know cell service is really pretty poor mm -hmm. around here and you really have to strain to see that thing yeah. from the historic district yeah um I mean, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that big. It's on Route 28 by, yeah. uh, by Duncan Donuts. That's, they're the still putting it in the same place, right? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I was heading in the wrong yeah, direction. Yeah, the church next to it. Oh. Across yeah, from the, the wall. Lot somewhere. It's like a little spot. Well, I don't think I've ever even really noticed it. It's, not there. it's not there yet. It's not there yet. No, but it's I mean. Just, yeah. Uh, it's it's a Catholic Catholic church. Church. No, it's a Yeah, you wouldn't really. And I'm sure the church is doing it. Yes, they are for because they the get property. right. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. So, um, but they're still going through ZBA and all these other approvals because they came back with, as you said, a clock tower. The original yeah, one was just the tower. Yeah, and they were going to add a clock to it, trying to make it more attractive. And, yeah, and they've um, got the, there's yeah. um yeah decoration you can put on it. Yeah, like you know that. Uh, well, this structure hides. Yeah. The, you know the. The, the pole. <laughs> well, the pole, <laughs> the but nature. more importantly, the, you know, the structure itself, the, yeah. that you won't see that. Right, right. So this is a big, is... you know, um, change. Yeah. 
improvement, I think. So, and the trees will grow up around right. it. Yeah. yeah. So it's so and there's a treat area there. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's where it's going to be going into. Yeah. So, so yeah. this is it's going to happen. Yeah. Based on the DRI, I don't see. I really don't see from an historic standpoint. I no, I mean, no. outside. I, I, no. I don't think they're looking for responses, are they? I don't know. Are they and, telling us? <laughs> no, okay. I, my only comment would be, it's too bad it couldn't be done on town land so the town could. Well, that's get the money. Get the money. Yeah. Of, um, but church. that's too far down the road. That's not yeah. on the tables. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is FYI, which is yeah, better than the initial, yeah. which we made comments right. on. Right, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So what are they asking us to do? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really think. think. Just, hey, here you go. If you wanted, it's a, I think it says if you want to make any comments, they can be submitted. But they're really asking, I think, that um, the, the tower order. people to, you know, that they're supposed to be in compliance with, um, you know, a bunch of stuff that they're still waiting for information from them. So. Um, yeah, it was just, a, I think, kind of an FYI about where they are right now and that uh, Julie wanted to share with you guys. So should we just send something saying that this is an improvement and we are okay with it or do we need to do that or? I don't know. I think we don't have a problem. With it. I, so I don't, I don't think we need to. Um, okay. But I, my only, I had a question here. So what's all this about Bellevue Avenue? Oh, the I think that's the bridge, the Bass River Bridge update, where okay. they're going to yeah, put the flag. that was the bridge, yeah. The yeah, we'll get, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Do you want to do our hand seal update first? Yeah. Judge. So, um, at the last... And seal meeting, we had um, a lot of conversation in and around um, the current imagery and um, what um, images would be appropriate from, not appropriate, but the committee would feel um, should be included in a proposed new seal. And one of the statistical numbers um, that came out of the survey was that 64% of these respondents said that um, there should not be a, a major redo of the seal. Yes, it should be um, culturally correct, um, but so based on that, our uh, discussion was, okay, well, let's, let's go back and look at, um, you know, the seal and look at, um, you know, the images. You'll recognize this from our work. That we did. And so um, as a result, and I won't go into all of the detail, the minutes will, you know, be finalized, but um, so at the at the conclusion of the discussion, Mr. Slama moved the committee vote to approve the inclusion of the following items in the town seal: an eastern pine tree, um, the lighthouse, a schooner, water feature, and the words "Town of Yarmouth," and the words "Incorporated 1639," seconded by. Mr. Tom Sullivan. Uh, so, and then after, um, not the word mannequin. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> after the after discussion was agreed, the next meeting we will discuss the inclusion of the word mannequins or mannequins. And also, should we include an image of a Native American? And should we include a TPO wigwam? I then recommended that we write to David Wheaton, and I sent everybody a copy of what went out to David um, relative to getting his feedback. Bob and I crafted this, this, this document. 
Um, and great, Doug. so, and so what it, um, what it asks is David, the seal committee is seeking to understand what the Maticke stated on the seal really means. Is it the people, the area or both? We want the board to be correctly represented. The committee would welcome and appreciate your thoughts relative to the historical, cultural, and linguistical accuracy of the word Maticis. In the event that you cannot help us in this matter, kindly steer us in the right direction. So, um, and everything's there. So, right, right. Um, so, I agree with Bob. This is this should be in a library. This should be framed. <laughs> okay. This needs to be in the next book. Oh, there you go. There you go. Where's that phrase that really impressed me? You wish? I get that. I don't think I got that. Um, uh, it, George emailed it out. So it's in your email. Yeah. It's in your tons of emails. Um, another one from Slama. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. The linguistical <laughs> accuracy. I like that. That is good. That, that, Who was that? That's got a nice turn to it. <laughs> Yuri. Okay. That's good. Good word. Sometimes I Whistical. come up with a word <laughs> and misspell it. <laughs> <laughs> or make it up and be like, yeah, that's a word. <laughs> what is this? A census of all praying Indians? What does that mean? Uh, most of the indigenous on Cape Cod were Christianized. So they were known as Christian were they Christianized by choice or by no? Oh. So once again, this is the that's long a, arm of colonization. Yes, <laughs> very long and very muscle bun. Yeah. yeah. That's really not very linguistical. So but I do like this magistrate Daniel Bukum. That name's gonna be in my my next book. I like that. Daniel <laughs> Guggen sounds like a minister, a Calvinist. <laughs> you know, it's much well, more Christian. Say he's a Calvinist, but really, he was a Puritan. Uh, Who had an affair with him? She's got the story all written already. Yeah, she does. You see the wheels turning. That's what it's going to but, be. But I think you have to say that he yeah. and was yeah. um, <laughs> actually in real life, he and John Elliott were, were lovers. Were <laughs> and being <laughs> what? <laughs> the skittle. <laughs> <laughs> being being recorded. Thank That's right. <laughs> going to have a, a trust. Okay, next item, please. Thank you very much. Ready to go. All right. Input on where we're going to place. Replacing my tenure. Plaque placement at Packet Landing. Say that five times. Placement at Packet Landing. Yeah. Placement. Yeah. Placement. Yeah. Is this a plaque that exists on the bridge today? Yeah, remember we talked about that. There's a plaque on each side of the yeah. bridge, is one yeah. on the Yarmouth side, and that's Definitely. going to be. We had talked about this before, and it was a few months ago. Yeah, it's, it's but, and they were not going to. They're not going to put it back on their bridge because the because bridge. It'll be a different bridge, right? But we want to and save so, the well, plaque. We yes. want to save the plaque. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, yeah. so they agreed to save the plaque for us, and so. Well, the um, they so thought that to put Packet it. Landing would be a good place for us. They were asking, where? where would you prefer to have it in Packet Landing? And so he had given me the west, which way you want it to face. Do you yes. want it face, so west you know, facing so there's people the options. walking toward the bridge, right. north facing toward the sidewalk no. as it is today. Yeah, so that was the, South that's the question. facing toward the front. Well, it depends what they're going to do on the sidewalk. So is there going to be a sidewalk? And how much of a berm beyond the sidewalk will there be enough room? In other words, it, it drops off right there. Okay. So the question is, are they building flat ground mm -hmm. just to accommodate a sidewalk? Or are they going to accommodate more? 
because if you otherwise you won't be able to put a stone or a monument there. Are they right, trying could... to put it on something that's already existing? No, I think they're looking. No, I think it sounds as though they're they are looking to to build something build for something it rather than put okay. it on the building. Got it. And so they're they were <clears throat> interested in in Wait, your opinion on where if it, if it would be better if people are walking towards the bridge yeah, from packet say... landing that it faces them. So they're looking at the plaque and looking at the bridge, the bridge. or whether it should be. Um, Facing, the facing towards the park, you know, away from the other way, mm -hmm. or um, facing towards the sidewalk. In the same way, or where kind of it is today. Yeah, kind of, yeah, side. right. I would and say I can get more specific. Facing the sidewalk. I would say either the sidewalk. the sidewalk or the people walking toward the bridge. I think we have the ladies. Yeah, I would come back in. Yeah, I left my sunglasses here. Oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Did they fall in your car beside the seat? Uh, oh, I'll find them. I, I, yeah, I have to uh, set things on the floor. So okay. See. If we find them, we'll, I'll give you a call. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. I looked at the top of my head because I have a way I couldn't buy my glasses and they were on my head. <laughs> And I just I believe that's so I, I agree. I think either west or north. Yeah, west. that's what oh, I would okay. say. West or north. Okay. I I I, I want to talk a little bit about this bridge. Okay. Because I think um I don't know who to talk to about it. They're doing all this. They're doing all this change and they're widening the road, they're doing all this stuff, and they're not putting the utilities in the way. And like right there at the light where the there's a telephone pole, which is like this far from the street, mm. on the sidewalk, obstructing. Okay. And the same with the four corners. Why wouldn't they be putting the utilities underground? I mean, I don't just don't get it. All this money being spent, and they're going to keep. I mean, when when storms come up and everything, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I don't know why underground utilities would be such a big deal. They're digging everything up anyhow. Is that a point? That's the state, right? I mean, this is yeah, the state. Right. State. yeah. So yeah. and yeah. And who in the town would that be? DBW, because um, you know it's a committee. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so it's a chapter. And I had two. Uh, that was one thing. Yeah. And the other thing was uh, historical signage on the bridge itself. Yeah, like I had a bump out or something. Yeah, I had. That's why I put this in here, box. I know you'd ask about the bump outs. If you look at this picture, you can see these those four bump outs that are going to be on the new bridge. They're going to be about seven feet in, according to um, right. my contact like are guy. those for fishing? Or... Fishing and viewing the river, he said. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that they, they're, at this point, I don't think they're planning on having anything historical there, but that's that's why I shared this picture with you, because I know you had asked about that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Cool. So, I mean, maybe a quick, quick note to, um, there must be somebody on the town. The DPW, just to say, historic district, you know, um, it was raised in the meeting as, you know, query as to um, why they're not taking the opportunity to put, yeah. put them on the ground. So let's Yeah, maybe the state, but I can ask, you know, my contact. You can ask yeah, yeah, it's committee. Well, yeah. It's going to be dug up. Yeah. Right. So let's, yeah, I'll ask I mean, you. it's, yeah. it is an historic area. Mm -hmm. Original bridge, what, 1833? Okay. okay, no, I'll ask. He's yeah. on this committee for this right. bridge, and, and right. he, if he may not know the answer, but he may know somebody who does. Right. So I'll see what right. I can find so out. Let's, okay. let's yeah, yep, yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. Sounds All right, good. we've got right. a, uh, a report from George. Mm -hmm. Summer's not over report. <laughs> what um, you got? Yeah, I had sent, sent it out. To folks, I didn't print it. There's, there's a lot of paper there, but just 
again, as I mentioned in summary, um, you know, it was a, a program created by the Brewster Universal Universalist Unitarian Church as a gap between when camp end and the two weeks to when, as months know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so, so they, um, they got a bunch of volunteers. A friend of a friend asked if I would be interested in participating. With, with the archaeological background. Um, it didn't take me long, but I said, sure, why not? <laughs> and so long and short of it, um, so we could go Wednesday, we go yesterday. Um, and uh, so and there were three modules, three groups, um, and one hour module. So we had a brief Sit down, explanation. These are artifacts. This is what an archaeologist does. This is what a paleontologist does. Everybody loves, they wanted to find any dinosaur fossils out here. <laughs> you never know. Um, so we ended up the week before doing a test pit out there and found some artifacts with the idea that we would, each group would get a chance to dig and sift. And what we did is we seeded the pit with some shiny stones from the mercantile, <laughs> from shells from Bass River, and three inch dinosaurs that the one cupcakes and everything. <laughs> That's so cute. And, <laughs> and admittedly, the, the young boys love the dinosaurs, the <laughs> ladies love the shiny stones, most of them. So, uh, so, and what was wonderful is after the module was finished and it was near a playground area, um, they had time, you know, to get on the swings and stuff, but a number of them went around and would bring, is, is this quartz, George? Is this a, is this a diamond? Is this a dinosaur fossil? You know, I said, well, well, it looks more like a shell, but... It was amazing. And then the next day, um, a young, I, I don't know how old she was, but you'll see in the, in the um, PowerPoint, she found in the woods near um, a church building where there was an 1860 house and found 1850, 1860, 1870 pottery shards. Oh, God. Take a look at that. It's amazing. And um, yeah. So clearly what that yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. clearly what what it was was the house no longer exists. And either, you know, it was a dump area or when the house collapsed, mm -hmm. you know, they threw, you know, all of these artifacts were still in. Wow. So like you, you can't, that should be in your book. Oh, and great. as they're digging down, is that a hand? <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was great. So also led, found a letter from George Booth up there. <laughs> in a bottle. Daniel. Oh, that's brother. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. So um so we showed the color um and um, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. That sounds like fun. Yes. It is. All right. Okay. Next. What are these things here? Are these things from George? Oh, yeah. Is that me now? Yeah. I was there yesterday for another meeting. And I think this is terrible. He fainted words. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. What's going on? What's this? So, um, so going down to the um, farmer's market and walking by, um, I noticed. These bricks. Mm -hmm. Artsy, absolutely. Um, maintaining the character defining feature of an historic building in the historic district. Not too Not much. really. I don't even really think it's artsy. It looks to me like the entrance to a state run daycare center. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, with these primary colors and everything. I, you know. Yeah, it's so quite I, odd, so I attached the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Re Rehabilitation mm -hmm. and the um, <laughs> yellow um, yeah. line items um, uh, 
are relevant. And so do we know why this was done? Is it no, like no, some weird little no, art installation no, type thing? I was there like it was done from an art standpoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I understand. Is it however, temporary or however it's I think it's not consistent with ma maintaining mm -hmm. the character no. plan. No. So I would like to make a motion that we send um a, a letter uh, to um, Beatrice Gremlich, who is the board of the chair, as it's a, um, mm -hmm. you know, a governance issue mm -hmm. with the CC to Molly de Moulinier, who's the executive director, mm -hmm. um, stating the case um, and to um, ask them to submit to the historical commission um, their plans to remediate this. And as as it says in the, mm -hmm. in the federal guidelines, um, the surface cleaning of the structure is appropriate shall be undertaken using the gentlest means possible. So um, I suggest that they need to demonstrate and to show us and to give us a timeline. I, I would just like to throw out something. Um, paint is not a character defining feature. You can paint any historical building, any color you want. But I would come back that the brick is the character defining feature and it changes the uniformity of it. So that would be my... Okay, but the building is not historic. It was built in 1933. In, in the... It's culture. not on the Bass River Historic District. What? It's not on there. Really? But well, in in on their when website, they did the Bass River Historic District in seventy eight, the building was only thirty seven years old. So, but uh, does it sit within the district? It sits in the district, but is not on the uh, historic homes. So in, in on their website, they describe it as cultural center is a world-class art have housed in an historic building. Oh, so they define it as a historic building. But it's not. But it is not. So it's historic because it was at one time the Bass River Savings Bank, but it mm -hmm. wasn't the first bank. The first bank was on the corner of Bellevue and 228. <clears throat> This wasn't built till 1934, 1934. Now the Owl Club is a historic building. Mm -hmm. That was a that was standing in the farm, <laughs> but this is not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. So I remove my motions. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, mm -hmm. it's just it is disappointing. Mm -hmm. oh, but sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. All right. All right. One more. Yep. Item for me. Go for it. Town of Yarmouth 2023 open space and recreation plan. Our past. Departed friend Jack Duggan, departed from the Historical Commission. <laughs> yeah, he's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> the Still alive. <laughs> On the record, he's alive. <laughs> Giving his EIA background, he does a lot of research and was very interested in highlighting the fact that in the history of the community on the back of this, you saw this Bob, right? Mm -hmm. Um that it's woefully inadequate, dare I say, inaccurate. And and where did this come from? This is this is a recreation plan. This is out of comments. This oh, this okay. was distributed. Um, this is a prototype, so to speak. Or? 
this is right. They've, they've been working on this open space recreation plan, yeah. and so the planning department, and so it's it's out for comment and suggestions. So it's a plan, and it's from this, our purview standpoint, it's an opportunity for us to get this corrected. So there's a lot of truth in here, like the bit about the. The first three settlers mm -hmm. it's right. all true right. and when they and i think where this comes from is that in the grant that they were given in 1639 mm -hmm. um they settled in a place called medicines it says it in the now right. that, but that is only the northern part <laughs> by the northern part of the army but the first sentence says english and this was jack's point about the indigenous peoples English settlers arrived to what is today known as Yarmouth in the 1630s, when many generations of Native Americans, the Wampanoag Nation, lived on the lands. Um, so when it's it would be current Wampanoag Nation. Well, what it doesn't mention is the fact that the archaeological record shows that the first peoples were here 10 to 12,000 years ago. So, um, so. Okay, yeah. So somebody who is a better craft person, I would suggest if they could take a shot at this, this would be good. And it's, who wrote this? I had no idea about it. It's in I desperate know. need of proofreading. I have no yeah. idea about it. Yeah. But it's in reading through, there are several grammatical errors. So can you take this on, Meg? Sure. That would be great. I'll I'll look at it from the historical if standpoint. If you will look at it from the historical yeah. standpoint, I'm bad at it from and, a mechanical and, and I will do the indigenous piece and push that out. Right. And I'll just say you guys did a really good job. Why don't you do the sure overall you. edit? <laughs> I'll I just mean, approve what, it all when you're done. <laughs> so the history of the community, because like this talks about Dennis, which isn't our community anymore. It's, it's not Yarmouth, although it was Yarmouth in 1783. Um, <laughs> So um, this is just like included in the overall even thing. The salt, that's right. It's, I mean, well, that's just what I was going if, to. If you right, speak if you, to, uh, yeah. honestly, if you go okay. on the yeah, I think I have website it. and you know take a look. At yeah, this and, I got a link for it. Uh, could, Lisa, could you check when they're looking for comments back? I will. What the yep. What the the line is? And, <laughs> yep. And if, if need be, we can send a placeholder saying that the. Mm -hmm. Historical Commission is going to weigh in on this. Okay. Um, okay. But this is our opportunity. There's a lot of planning. There's a lot of yeah. documents. Oh, is, it, is it open space only in the north side? Is that what it's No, promoting? this is town of Yeah. Yeah. This so is, like the, is, the beaches and the Judah Baker This Mill is the town of Yeah. The whole town. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions I had, if you look down below, the town is broken into four historic, historic districts. Old Kings Highway, Campgrounds, South Yarmouth, and the North Side Historic District located along 6A. Isn't that, is that the Old Kings, Kings Highway? Highway? There's, there's a separate that is Old line. Kings. No, there is a separate one. What? Really? Yeah. No, there is one. We were, They were asking me about this when mm -hmm. we were writing yeah, this but up. But if it's like a, 6A, why isn't it Old Kings I don't. Highway? There's a separate North Side. I've, I've got some paperwork on it. I'll send it to you guys. Because it doesn't affect it. us. What? No, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Well, but... but <laughs> You know, we were surprised when we found out that there was a campground historic <laughs> district. We didn't know that. And now have, there's another one. Have there we is. ever known about this North Side historic district? I didn't know until they were asking me about this, as they had said. I thought there was another district. And uh, so I dug around in some paperwork, and there it's is. It's stupid so. that it wouldn't be part of the Old <laughs> Kings Highway because it's on Old Kings Highway. Well, let's not. So let's. Let's find out. Yes, I'll send it to you guys. Okay. I'll send it to you guys. Yeah, because yep. this okay. is like. According to folklore. Yeah, that's funny. 
Well, the other thing is this last sentence here, whatever it is, it's like huh? sitting out there all by itself. What, the three time yeah. I mean, Yeah, it's a little weak. <laughs> <laughs> what about it's a landing? Week. I know. Yeah, like the rest of early Cape Cod is settled. Yeah, Packet landing, is northeast the quarter of the Indian fishermen. Nothing about the salt works industry. No. I mean, if you don't do fishing and yeah. tease people, <laughs> right? All right. It's, it, moving on. Yeah. it's amusing. I, I don't think they meant for it to be amusing. Well, I wasn't amused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that I'm not you. I will not tell you, <laughs> history is very hard to write in this country. Yeah, absolutely. Because there has been so much written. Well, that's the problem. And um, yeah. there have been so much plagiarism over and over and over again that they, some things turn into blood yeah. war. Yeah. That yeah. were one. Back. Okay. Next slide. All right. Next thing is the talent bank oh, update. I, I, the forms. Oh, stop, stop. No, that's Sorry. all right. No, it was just um I found I think I told you guys yeah. a couple minutes ago. I was on I look got a call. I just had an ones, and so I've got I have found three people that might be good. And so Pam Barnes has reached out to them. Okay. okay. Um, one of them is an interesting, she's on the affordable housing something. And the other one wanted more information. So I sent her an email and say, let me know what you want to know. Okay. Um, I don't think Pam's heard from the other guy yet, but do there's we, some. Do okay. we know what their qualifications or credentials might be? I mean, do they have any background in history or are they just <clears throat> interested in the commission? And, um, the one I sent you guys several of them. Yeah. I think George and Bob picked yeah. out like three people that seemed like they oh, you know, would have okay. a good background. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah. And, um, so anyway, hopefully, hopefully we'll get some you know results from that. You know, uh, I'm thinking of a guy by the name of Tom Niganello. Okay, you know him. Mm -hmm. He was um, president of the chamber for a while. He owns Route 28 Diner, that little diner. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, across from uh, where the laundromat used to be. Yeah, across the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, I don't think, I don't, I mean, he's a member of the chamber, but I don't think he's hmm. involved in more. He, he, he at one time approached me and said, you know, I a position, I think he was referring to the Historical Society, but I mean, this might be something that he could do. Yeah, you can reach uh, out to him and have him yeah, fill out one of the talent bank forms and, and say that he's interested in the historical mm -hmm. commission and that puts it in the works. Mm -hmm. um, or anybody else you, you guys know of who sure. would, you know, who would be um, a good member. George, I quit the job at Stop and Job. All of the research that I needed from my <laughs> new book. <laughs> Just remember, stay away from the meat cutting machine in the deli. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's right. I think you're giving away the thought. That's right. Yeah. All right. I have so many figures in here. Okay. All of the elderly in this little seaside town that get home delivery are dying. Or missing. Oh, I know that we approve the minutes as as the submitted. Can I have a second to approve the minutes, please? Second to approve the minutes, please. Second. Yes. All in favor of the minutes. Yeah. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Next meeting okay. is October twelfth. October twelfth. Be there or be square. <laughs> right. Okay. So moved. Yes. All right. Second. I second it. Yeah. All of the Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> close us out. Okay. Nobody watches this so far. Serious. <laughs>